On the surface level, I'm a very stoic guy. There's not many things in the world that can really touch me on an emotional level. When it comes to art, when it comes to music, when it comes to drama, or even my personal life. But there is one thing that always moves me almost to tears. Something that always succeeds in making me somewhat sad and melancholic. It's a particular sound that I want to share with you. This is Bart Coppens. I'm awake at 3 o'clock at night because I cannot sleep. I'm bored and I have a wonderful audience to talk to. So if you're here for a story, then please stay for this episode of Bart Vlogs. Listen. My story begins with a bird. Now I'm not an ornithologist, that means like a bird specialist, so please take everything I say with a grain of salt. I have a background in biology, but I'm particularly obsessed with insects and I'm going to tell you some bird biology today. I hope you will stay and listen, but please don't take everything I say as 100% fact. However, the backstory I'm about, I'm about to tell you is true. On Hawaii, there used to be a special type of bird. Uh, I believe its common name in Hawaiian is very hard to pronounce. It's the Kawaio, uh, scientific name Moho Bracatus. This was a beautiful bird, uh, a nectar drinking bird, as far as I believe. So let me show you a picture. Of this bird while I drink a sip of my tea. Ah, that's a nice bird, right? So, this nectar drinking bird, which was unique for Hawaii, it lived in no other place in the world but Hawaii, uh, it went extinct. We, it's the oldest story in the book, we uh, humans, we wiped it out. Uh, directly by destroying the habitat but also indirectly by introducing other animal species to Hawaii such as the Polynesian rat and also feral pigs uh, which are types of animals uh, that will change the habitat or act as a predator in some cases to the birds that weren't able to compete with these animals um, of course there's also deforestation etc Basically, we fucked it up. This is already said by itself, right? We, we killed this species. We wiped it out. And there's no way to, to do anything about it now, because they're gone, right? But um, here's the sad story. In 1987, yes, the uh, scientists that uh, were studying the birds in Hawaii found what they thought was the very last specimen of this species. Um, the males and females of this bird, they had a special song that they used to sing together. The male would sing uh, one part and then the female would sing one part and together they would complete the song. It was basically like a duet. However, uh, what the scientists found was the last what they assume was the last individual of his own species. And what they did is they made an audio recording of 
the song of this bird. And this audio recording is really sad in my opinion. Because um, it's a male. He is calling for a partner. Uh, a partner that will never come because he is the last of his species. So um, it's a really sad audio recording basically of the last of his kind singing to a female that doesn't exist because he was the last of his kind. So it's a really touching uh, audio recording in my opinion. And of course now uh, I'm going to play it for my YouTube fans, followers, whatever you call yourself. Just because I like to share, I like to tell you a nice story. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really sad hearing this audio recording. Just of the last bird of his kind calling for a female that will never come because his species is practically extinct and he is alone. Now that, if you ask me, is quite a touching sound. So, very sad audio recording. Sadder than any music that I could listen to on the radio for sure. But why am I sh showing it, this to you? Um, because there's also a moral in the story. I'm not one of those YouTubers who just want to clickbait you with something sad. Because lately in the media it has... Um, a lot of things have been blown out of proportion and people are worried about pollution in the oceans and how we are burning down the rainforest and the absolute state of Borneo which is like 80% of the forest are being destroyed and I don't know China dumping garbage in the rivers and species going extinct and blah 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 it's true that we are probably among the last generations, if this doesn't stop, that get to witness the biodiversity of the Earth as it is. Um, but one of the th questions that often arises when you discuss this with people is, why don't people care? Why don't people care about the environment collapsing? Why don't people care about these extinctions? Why don't people care about f forests being slashed and burned down? Why don't people care? And it hit me when I listened to this audio recording. Because what I just showed to you probably made you feel sad, right? Uh, that's the appropriate emotion, at least, that you would expect to feel if you cared about the environment. But here's the funny thing. If, if I hadn't told you about this bird, you probably would have never known about him. Now, okay. I know some of my viewers are nature lovers, so there's a good chance that some of you may be bird lovers and ornithologists, or uh, you heard the story before, because my audience just has a higher chance of knowing about biology. But the average person, he would never feel sad about this bird, because he never heard of the story before. And neither did I. I just discovered this on the internet. Um, it was very public knowledge for decades. But I just discovered this on the internet and it made me feel sad. So the moral of the story that is that it's, um, it's difficult to care about something you don't see. 
this sounds really obvious, but the problem with environmental destruction is that people expect it to be some kind of apocalypse, like the forest disappearing, the birds falling from the sky, the fish in the ocean dying. They're waiting for a disaster of epic proportions. But the problem is destruction of our environment. It's really difficult to see. It's difficult to witness with your own eyes. Because if one species goes extinct, be it a rhino, be it some kind of monkey, a butterfly, or a moth, or even a, a type of plant, then nobody is going to care, because nobody is going to see it, nobody is going to notice it. And of course, over time, more species will go extinct. But that's the problem. It happens over time. Environmental destruction is something that happens over decades, over generations of people. In fact, you probably wouldn't notice right now that your environment that you live in, that you grew up in, has been destroyed. Because you haven't seen the change with your own eyes. But if you went back in time for 40 or maybe 50 years, you may have heard the stories from old people that uh, I haven't seen here where I live uh, a lizard in my entire life, but uh, my grandfather or my father himself used to, used to say that lizards used to be common here everywhere, for example. And just as, that's just an example of one species. It could be anything. It could be the birds, it could be the forests. that have gradually changed over decades. But it is this gradual change that makes people not care, because you don't see it, you don't notice it. If I wouldn't have told you about this bird, you would never have known about it, you would never have cared, you would never have felt sad about it. And that's what goes through the mind of the average person. If you de deforest the entire rainforest, for example, um, if you would do it in instantly in one day, then people would be outraged, it would be a an, an, an disaster of epic proportions. But if you slowly destroy it, over the span of maybe 10 or 20 years. Nobody's going to notice it. Because it happens too slow for us to observe. And sure, species go extinct all the time. And maybe this species of rhino dies. And it's like, okay, who cares about a rhino? It's not something you immediately notice in your environment, right? And sometimes species of birds die, and some species of plants die, and then little bits of this get de deforested. And who cares? Seriously, who cares? The average person doesn't see this, right? I mean, 50% of the population on Earth, I think, lives in cities. If you live in a city, are you going to notice environmental destruction? No. Because there's already nothing left. I mean, I think half of the people that live on planet Earth are not going to see it if you if you burn down every patch of ecosystem that we have left, I mean, most people wouldn't even notice in their suburbs, in their cities. So they're already far, so far removed from it. So uh, it's not a very, it's not very deep or insightful revelation if you think about it as just common sense. But it's something to keep in mind. And this is why, in my opinion. YouTube channels like mine, for example, but also other things like education are very important. Because you have to slap people in the face with it. You have to show them what's happening. Because if you don't show them, they don't notice. They will not see what is happening. And that's more of my story today. Why? Because I couldn't sleep. Had some problems with sleeping lately. I don't know what it is. It's difficult. I'm feeling fine, I'm not sick, I just have this weird, I don't know, my sanity is low or something. And I thought it would be a cool nighttime story for you to show. I hope you learned a little bit and you, that you enjoyed it. This episode, no moths for you, but very rare cases, I upload other things. Back to the insects, see you later. Hey everyone, and thanks for watching Bart Vlogs. My random YouTube mini-series where I talk about anything I want.
I was very reluctant to do this and start vlogging because you see I'm an entomologist from the Netherlands that usually films butterflies, moths and other insects. And most of you have subscribed to see my YouTube content about biology and nature. Not to watch me vlog about random things. But I had a revelation. You see, I am a very opinionated man. And YouTube has given me a platform, an audience, to listen to my opinions. Now, this was hard for me to resist. But it also, it's also for the benefit of you. Because this was my revelation. In Dutch we have a saying and it goes Ik moet mijn ei kwijt. Literally translated it means I need to lay my egg. I have a pathological need to share my opinions. And I'm the same because I'm very opinionated. But why is it for the benefit of you? Well, if I get to contain my opinions within one YouTube mini-series, that means that I don't have to vent them in my other YouTube content. That means if you are here to watch butterflies or moths or other things about nature, then that's fine. It means you won't get to see my opinions when you are watching something educational. So to sum it up, most of my content is for you, the viewers, to see. But this mini-series is for me, because I need to vent my opinions. It's also a very good way to answer personal questions that all of you have asked me in the comments. And now I've given you, the viewer, a choice. Do I want to see Bart's opinions or not? Or do I just want to see the butterflies, moths, etc? So there you go. Thanks for watching Bart Vlogs. Like, subscribe. And consider joining my crowdfunding platform, Patreon, because for some reason my entire YouTube channel is permanently demonetized and I'm reliant on crowdfunding for 100% to run this channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time in Bart Vlogs.